everybody. <clears throat> Ryan, aka Ecoboosted here. I said some time back that I was going to be making a video on how I made my poker table without video. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do it. I was editing my video and I realized there's a portion where I said, I don't know how I'm going to make this video. And then I make this video. So this video is that video. Oh, by the way, I shot this after I shot the main video, so this is just me interjecting in the middle of editing. Okay, enjoy. Do that just yet, but what I can do is make a video with a bunch of pictures I took and maybe do a voiceover of some kind. So this poker table started off as a project that my brother and I wanted to do a couple of years ago. Um, probably closer to two years ago is when we first conceived and purchased the first couple pieces for this table. It consists of very simple building materials, uh, two sheets of uh, plywood, both three quarter inch thick. One was a, like a, I bought a cabinet grade so I could stain it. And one was just a nice finished grade, uh, just better quality plywood. Um, they don't necessarily have to be that, especially if you're, if you're gonna paint the exposed wood portions of this table. Um, or they can be depending upon how you wanted to finish it. Uh, as you can see from this picture here, I decided to finish mine with a black vinyl. It would have been leather if I could afford it, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, armrest that has two layers of, of quarter inch thick um, a high dense foam that I got from a poker supply house. The inner portion which is actually the game surface is a blue velveteen material very beautiful material um, relatively inexpensive it wasn't I don't I have to dig out the price and if I think of it I'll put it here or something um, and then the racetrack which is the inner portion of the poker table is just the finish grade or cabinet grade plywood that you chose. Now, in mine here, you see that I chose to stain it and then I polyurethane uh, the entire thing with several coats. And we'll talk about that process, which was not a fun or a quick process by any stretch. But I learned a few key things from messing with polyurethane. So let's talk about the construction of the table. The construction is pretty straightforward. Now you see that there are four basic components to this table. So the construction began by taking the four uh, the two pieces of plywood and then cutting them out um, into these three rings and then this center piece. Um, the big ring on the far left of the picture, you look at the picture would be the far right. So yeah. So the big ring on the far right in the picture is the actual racetrack. The piece right next to it, um, laying up against my window, is the actual playing surface. It's about two foot in diameter, or two foot wide with two, two foot radius and on either side. The next piece is the armrest, um, or the, the, yes, the armrest. And then the, the ring laying on a side, sort of, is just a piece that helps bolster the armrest, give it a little, a little bit more body, a little bit more girth. Um, the cuts are straightforward. I use a jigsaw um, on the raised cuts, and then on the straight cuts, I just use a circular saw. Uh, it took us, and my brother and I did this, it took us maybe a couple hours to get this laid out and cut out. We could have done it faster, but we were trying to be very careful to cut the radiuses as nice as possible. If I do this again, I'll come up with some form of jig. Um, if you look real, real close at the big table, you can tell that the radiuses are not perfectly cut, which is an eyesore for me, but most of my friends who found me using the table love it, and I didn't even notice any of the blemishes that, of course, as the maker you see. All in all, uh, it came out pretty nice. Here on this picture, I have a couple of the pieces set up on saw horses. Uh, my intention there was just to kind of just lay it together. To so we ended up putting the racetrack back around the playing surface. So the racetrack, or the drink ring, if you will, and the playing surface come from the exact same piece of ply. Um, and this is the one that was I set up to be, or I, I used uh, the, the cabinet grade because I was trying to stand it down the road. Here you can see I have the drink ring assembled. I have on top of the drink ring, I have the armrest um, and then the playing surface. And this is all just dry fit together. Um, you look very carefully at there, you'll see where the the gap between the uh, playing surface and the drink ring is about the width of a blade, the curve of the blade. Now here is where we started to actually cover and prepare the surfaces. So this here is where we've cut the quarter inch foam. Again, this foam, all the materials I bought from the same place, I'll link it below. This 
foam actually is a very dense, very uh, very comfortable foam. But I will tell you this, it does not like to have things set on it for a long time. It will take that shape. Eventually it goes away, but let's just say you set a heavy bowl or something on there. You'll have that indent in your table for a little while. Eventually, it, you know, it will work itself out, but it's just kind of unsightly until then. Now we use the 3M spray adhesive. I don't remember what model. It was the better of the two that you can get from Home Depot. I think it was like the 90 or the 88 or whatever grade it was. Uh, it worked very well. And once you let it tack up, which is a lesson I learned on another project, if you don't let this thing, this stuff tack up, it just doesn't work, period. Here we are test fitting the, in this case, the Velveteen. And I could have gone with a number of different options uh, on the website, list a whole, whole slew of, of colors of felt, of um, numbered playing surfaces, decorative, like tortoise style playing surfaces, or just straight colors. The Velveteen was a really nice price, a really brilliant blue color. I mean, the camera here doesn't, and this was shot at night using um, a light. Uh, I think I have fluorescent lights in the garage and I had a couple shop lights outside, which are the incandescent, like 500 watt style bulbs. Um, and even this doesn't do it justice. In this shot, we now have the Velveteen glued all down. I mean, we, we, we glued the foam, we, we spray glued the, the foam down, we spray glued the Velveteen down and then we rolled the edges underneath and I spray glued and stapled the Velveteen so it's not going anywhere. Um, and this is our first look of the raised surface. Now, the plywood that's sitting on is not the actual drink ring. This is the support material underneath of it. So we have the first layer of the foam. Now, we wanted to go with a half inch of foam on the armrest because that's where you're gonna be leaning, which was basically two layers. The foam for the playing surface, we were able to buy 30 inches wide. You know, this was already two foot wide. We just had to cut the radiuses and glue it down. That worked out well. For the armrest, uh, for the arm rail, we had to, I bought one foot strips that were quarter inch thick and we were able to wrap it all the way around and get it to full realness. Because it was foam, it was flexible. It did get a little tricky when you're trying to stretch it over the outside edge. And as long as you were careful, you didn't tear it. I think we had a few little oopses here and there, but for the most part, it covered pretty well. In this shot here, we have both layers on. It doesn't look as pretty because this is the underside, so I wasn't as focused about, focused on making it look as pretty as possible. But basically, that's what it's gonna look like. Here we have the arm flipped over. Looks a little spotchy, different spots, and that's just kind of how the glue settled, how the, the foam settled. Here we have everything stacked up in the garage. We were getting ready to close up tonight, so I just took a couple quick pictures. And you can see what we're, how everything's gonna lay out this picture. We have a, a little piece of the black vinyl that my brother's holding up. The actual aluminum, the chrome-ish aluminum drink holders. Uh, these are pretty good size. These will hold a can of beer. These will hold some of the larger cups. Um, I somehow lost one in this build, so I have eight holes and seven inserts, which is kind of irritating. But uh, we just did a good place to chip row over that particular hole and you, no problem, no harm or foul. The drink ring took a couple evolutionary steps in this build. I was originally gonna do a natural color and just stain it with some that would bring up the color real nice. The problem I ran into is as I was sanding it down to get a high gloss finish, because that's what I was shooting for ultimately, basically taking the rough out, I was sanding through the veneer, the outer, outermost level, and that was just user error. Um, you can see here in this picture, I have it sitting on top of my table saw and a saw horse as we were trying to stain it with a natural wood color. I don't remember what stain this was. I have to dig through and find it now. I don't, I don't recall. And it just didn't work out well. Here it is with a coat of poly on it. And it looked okay until I started sanding it back to get the ripples out of the poly. And this is where I started learning a couple of lessons on what not to do with poly and how, how to let it set. But ultimately, when we were all said and done, what we decided to go with was the Minwax uh, Cabernet. It's a very red, you can see, it's just a very brilliant red. It doesn't quite look this red in real life. Um, it's, a, it's toned down a bit, especially in a dark environment. This was done in my basement where I've installed fluorescent lights just so I could see. And I have a 100 year old home, so everything is just dark. And so I put fluorescent in it where I could uh, feasibly. So you can see in this picture, it looks very, very bright, right? But the thing you'll notice more than anything is that there's spots that look high gloss, there's spots that look ripply. And anybody who's ever done any finish knows exactly what this is. This is the point where we brushed on the stain and brushed on the poly, and it, there's waves and ripples in the, um, in the finish. Um, now the way that you get rid of those is you sand it back. And now this is the, the step or the problem I was running into when we were doing the brown color was sanding it back so it was smooth, we were sanding too far. And this again, this was just my own fault. I was using a far too heavy grit sandpaper. I wasn't taking time 
my time to do it properly. I didn't put enough coats down first before I started sanding back. And I think in a few cases I didn't let it cure long enough before I sanded the coats back. I, my first sanding took it down to this level here. Now where it's a very matte finish. This is where you can really see how flat your sanding is. Because once you get down to this matte finish where everything's flat, any spots that are still low or still high, you're going to see very easily and they're just going to shine right through. Now there was a couple spots where the wood had bulged underneath causing even this, even this bright red stain to be sanded away. Fortunately, they're either A, hidden underneath the armrest or B, where I had to install a cup holder. That may or may not have been on purpose where I put the cup holders to, to get around and the cup, the, I think there's only two bare spots where I sanded through this red finish. I actually did this flat sand process a couple times. Here's another picture where I put even more poly on top. Like I built the poly up pretty thick and I was using this triple thick poly resin stuff that worked out pretty well. So the Cabernet wood stain um, is a, a triple thick stain that I used. I only had one coat of that on there, which is probably why I sanded it through on a couple spots. But because it was a Verithane product, I wanted to keep the top coat the same. Like I originally bought stuff for to do shellac and everything else, and then I put this stain on and then realized after the fact that it was not compatible with shellac. So I was rather frustrated with myself. So I ended up going all poly route. Um, which once I figured out how to do it, came out pretty nice. All right, so this picture here is after a long, long process of poly sandback, poly sandback, poly sandback, with the intent of just building a thick, thick layer. I think all told, keeping in mind that this is a triple thick, so one coat is equal to three coats, so the can says, I don't know if that's true or not, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 40, 30 to 40 coats of poly all said and done. Now, that's not what's left on here because I've sanded, you know, sanded them back, but this here was what I ended up with. This was after going out and spending 80 bucks on a multi-speed uh, polishing tool. The one that looks like a big ass grinder, but it's not a grinder because it goes slower. Um, and a bunch of different, actually I ended up using automotive polishes. I used, uh, I think it was McGuire's three-step cutting process in order to bring this up to this nice high gloss shine that for the most part has been pretty damn durable. It's taken a few bits of damage now. The table's been in use for a couple of months now. We've played a number of games on it. I've used it as a workbench. Um, you guys know that I've worked on it a couple of times. But for the most part, it, it's, it's, it's taken the abuse. Now I didn't expect it to last. Honestly, I didn't because um, I own it, I made it, and, and frankly, I'm a bull in a china shop, so I didn't expect it by any stretch. But this here is what I ended up with. I thought this was uh, the best I was going to get using polyurethane. And I've seen, without knowing, without somebody fully training me, this is just trial and error, trial and error, back and forth, sanding it down, polying it again. And this probably took me a couple months to, to work through, to the point where my brother was like, are you even going to finish the damn thing? All right, so here is the armrest with the vinyl covering on it. It came out pretty well. A couple spots I ended up fixed. I even somehow managed to get a staple underneath between the vinyl and the foam. She had an <laughs> imprint of a staple there. Of course, I didn't know this until after I had the table together, and that was fun getting that out. So once I got the drink ring together, and once I got the poly done, then it was time for the lights. The lights actually were a last minute addition. The plans don't originally call for LED lights in it, at least this particular set. So I had to modify this table on the fly to add the LED lights. Now the lights or central lights, I got them from Home Depot. They were like an eight foot string for 40 bucks. They were a little overpriced for what they are. Two strings wasn't enough to go all the way around the drink ring. So I ended up using a piece of some Ikea LEDs that unfortunately are slightly different shape, but it worked for now. At some point I'll upgrade the LEDs, I'll just build a whole new table. But in this picture, you see how I attached them. I sat there and I cut up, I don't even remember how many of those little blocks there are, but they go all the way around the table. They're about three inches apart. What I did was put two screws in to hold them in place. And then I stapled a strip of the foam, half inch wide by quarter inch thick, all the way around the table as like a reflector slash mounting surface for the uh, LEDs. And then here we go with the assembly of the table. So 
we had decided we were gonna put this in my dining room table. So we, we had already previously removed the dining room table that was there. We just broke it down and put it in the basement. And then this is us installing it. So first we have our clear spot here. This here was the playing surface. This has the, the bottom on the side of the drink ring, playing surface attached to it, and that's it. So here you get the first leg going on, second leg going on. I might just play this over with music and let you guys see. Drink ring installed, then we simply installed the uh, armrest. And frankly, we just set all this on top. That way, if we need to move it or break it down, it's, it's light. It comes apart in three or four pieces. And then here it is, fully set up, ready to go. And then my little man cave. Funny enough, I got that from Dave & Buster's. They used to have their half price ticket redemption nights in every Wednesday, and then I would go and get tons and tons of tickets, and yeah, cool. All right, so I think that covers kind of everything on how this table was assembled. The total construction time was much longer than it really needed to be. Uh, the biggest reason was just time. I didn't have a whole lot of time to mess with this. Uh, and mostly procrastination and laziness, which I'm actively trying to work on. So, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, not video thing I did, yay. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section below. And you guys have a great night. Thank you. I really need to come up with a cool outro. All right, so the construction is momentarily ago as I said a minute ago so this thing uses this thing still recording because that would suck if you get through all this report all this video footage only to find out that your camera is not recording mine still is at least it was a second ago